Hey guys, Alan here, Solid Rock Sunday School class. Hey, hope you've had an amazing week. I know I've had a really crazy one and an amazing week for sure, but uh, hope all is well with you and your families. Hey, um, don't forget this week, we are having online services, 10 a.m., so make sure you tune the pastor in for that. And um, we've been working on character traits of Jesus, and that's where we're staying for quite a period of time is on these character traits of Jesus. And this week, we're going to look at a, a very, very important subject here in regards to the Christian life, and that is humility. Living our lives in humility. It's recognizing our weaknesses. It's showing awareness like a little child would take and show awareness that God and other people are responsible for the accomplishments that we have in our lives. In Proverbs, the 16th chapter, verse 18 and 19, it says, Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Better is it to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Notice here, pride and humility are exactly direct opposites of each other. We look again and we see the same exact concept as we look in 1 Peter. 1 Peter, the fifth chapter, verses five and six. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourself to the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another to be clothed with humility. For God resisted the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Again, we see this concept of direct opposites. Notice, I, I love verse 6. He says, humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. And he says, he's going to exalt us, but he's going to do it at the right time. Again, we looked at the fact of this pride and humility, though, they're direct opposites. So we're going to actually take, and instead of just talking about humility here, we're going to be talking about pride. Because if we can avoid pride in our lives, we have accomplished humility and we've accomplished the humility that God wants for us in our lives. So we're going to focus on pride because that's what we need to get out of our life. I don't know if you've ever heard the story. I've heard the story a long time ago. And uh, it's a story about two ducks and a frog. And they, they live happily out there on a, on a farm, out in a pond. And, uh, you know, they've, they've become best friends. And they amuse themselves. They play together in this, in this, this pond out here. And, and one, one of the summers, as it starts to become hot like it does in Bakersfield, we see that the pond starts to dry up. And, and soon it's really evident that they've got to all move on. Well, it's not a problem for the ducks at all because, of course, the ducks are just going to fly to the next pond someplace, find a better place. But the frog, he's kind of stuck. He really can't move that fast or that far. So they decided to put this plan into place. And this plan they put into place it was kind of ingenious. They took and they found a stick. And uh, the, the, the ducks both held the end of the stick in their, in, <clears throat> in their mouths, and their, in their beaks there, and then the frog right in the middle, he grabbed on to that, uh, that stick. And this plan worked really well. Boy, I mean, they took off, they're flying, they're doing extremely well with it, and, and this farmer took and he, he saw this weird object flying overhead, and, and he says, look at that. And he says, I am absolutely amazed at that. I wonder who in the world came up with that plan. <laughs> and the frog said, I did. You'll get it in a minute. But of all of our sins, I think we kind of struggle with, perhaps pride, it's probably the worst. Just when you think you got it licked, it takes and it rears its ugly head back up. You know, pride is it's one of those diseases that it's, it seems to make everyone sick except the person who has it. Uh, you know, there's going to be times, and perhaps there's been times when pride is, 
is in your life and no one knew about it. No one even could recognize it. But you know something? God did recognize it. And God does recognize it when it's in our life. And, you know, pride, it's, it's a spiritual disease. It's a spiritual cancer, I think you could kind of say. It's something we got to cut out and get rid of. It kind of, it's one of those things, it attacks us from within. And often, we don't even recognize it's growing in there until it gets really large and we need some major surgery. You know, this kind of surgery, I think it's going to be talked about here as we get into some scriptures in Hebrews here, in Hebrews, the fourth chapter, in verse number 12. He says, for the word of God, it's quick, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and the joints and the marrow, and is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. I want us to look at a couple of things. First of all, it's God's word, and it's going to be the Holy Spirit here that's going to take and direct us to show us this cancer we've got in our lives. Because notice here, it says he's the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of our heart. That, that's, that's a really rough statement. Because God knows us from the inside out. He knows our thoughts. And he knows what we're really intending to do. He knows when we're trying to manipulate something. Spiritual surgery, you know, it's performed by the Holy Spirit using God's word as the instrument here to take and to reveal to us what is in our hearts, what's in our minds. Think, think about this, this verse in Proverbs, 29th chapter, verse 23. A man's pride shall bring him low but honor shall uphold the humble spirit. So if we struggle with this pride to any degree here at all, we've got to take and we've got to demonstrate some really great wisdom, especially when we take and choose our friends and the people that we associate with. Because if you come across people and the people that are all around you, all they do is stroke your ego and they feed your pride. These people, you know, who tell you how great you are and how the world can't live without you. They're doing nothing but actually bring you down. You need to remember a couple of things here as we, as we think about the people we associate with. First of all, those people who tell us that we are just totally indispensable. Don't believe a word of it because you know if there's one thing I've learned in all of life here is and I've had to admit is the fact that everybody is replaceable you know there's there's someone else standing in line to take our place and they may do a better job of it by the way even though we don't want to admit it you're not God's gift to the workplace. You're not God's gift to the church. You're not God's gift to your marriage. And if you think you're God's gift to your marriage, you're probably in divorce court already, or even the kingdom of God. Every position you take and hold in life is a position of privilege. And you, you hold it by the grace and generosity of God. And you ought to take and approach it in that way. You know, there's been people who take and, 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 and they just try to refuse to understand this, thinking that, hey, the church can't live without me. My job can't live without me, you know? Well, that's not the truth. You know, the success of our lives, it doesn't rest on us. Or anyone else you know our success it all takes and depends on God and how much we let God take and work in our lives and he will accomplish his will within us if we allow him to do it 
But remember, we have to invite him in. We have to allow him to do that. So when we're taking and looking at people we associate with, we need to choose them extremely careful. There's a phrase, it says, iron sharpens iron. Proverbs, the 27th chapter, verse 17, it says, iron sharpeneth iron. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friends. The people we hang around have a lot to do with that pride as well as many other things within our lives. Only a fool will take and surround himself with people who tell him what he wants to hear. If all I do is, is get around people that tell me what I want to hear, I will fail. So if I'm wise, the best thing I can do for myself is to, round, or is to take and surround myself with people who aren't impressed with me. People who will tell me things that I don't necessarily want to hear. Somebody that's a straight shooter. Somebody that doesn't even care about my pride, doesn't care about my ego. People who love me, but they love God more. So I think we need to take a, a quick inventory of our friends and the people we associate with because it's an area that we'll struggle with. In Proverbs, the 16th chapter, verses 18 through 20, pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. Better is it to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. He that handleth this matter wisely shall find good. And whoso trusteth in God, happy is he. Boy, that really says a lot in that scripture. Humble ourselves, humble our spirit. Get pride out of our life. Make no mistake about it. When you lift yourself up in pride, when you take and you believe that you have arrived, I have arrived. Then you get to thinking that you're better and you're the best and you're the brightest. You can't go anywhere at that point except down. You've been lifted as high as you can go because your pride makes God so sick that he's not going to take and lift you any higher. In fact, he's going to take and see it and make sure that, that, that we don't take and, 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 and get any higher than that. In Proverbs, the 11th chapter, verse 2, when the pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly, there's wisdom. He says a lot there in Proverbs. Solomon, a very wise man here. When pride cometh, then cometh shame. But he says the lowly, that's where you find Wisdom, And I think that's what all of us want. We want wisdom in our lives. Staying with Solomon here in Proverbs, the sixth chapter in verse 16. Again, we look at this. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, the seventh are an abomination unto him. Notice this. The very first thing he mentions is a proud look. These six things doth God hate. And he says the first phrase, a proud look. Then he goes on, he says, in a lying tongue and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that deceiveth wicked imaginations, feet that are swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. I think it's really interesting. His very first statement is, these things God hates, a proud look. Staying with Proverbs again in, verse, in chapter 15, verse 25. 
the Lord will destroy the house of the plowed. We jump down to the 16th chapter again. In verse 5, everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Through the hand, join in the hand. He shall not be unpunished. Jumping over into the New Testament. And we look at the book of James, and James is one of those books I always love because he is such a straight shooter. And in verses 6 and 7, he says, But he giveth more grace. Wherefore, he saith, God resisteth the proud, but he giveth grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, he'll flee from us. So, first of all, in verse 6 here, he says, God resists the proud. And how do we get that pride out of our life? We look at verse 7, and he says, Submit ourselves, therefore, to God. If we submit ourselves, then we're resisting the devil, and the devil will flee from us at that point. So do you kind of get the point? You know, if, 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 you know, you may be proud of your accomplishments, you may be a, proud of your degrees. You may be a, proud of your income. You may be proud of your vehicles. You may be proud of your home. Maybe you're proud because you wear better clothes or you enjoy more privileges than some other people. You know, that, that kid that, that your kids take and, and they, they, they're better at sports and they play harder and run faster and, and make more points. But you know, some people are proud because of who their friends are and, 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 and the people and the cliques that they hang around with. And you can be proud. You can, you can be proud of things that you own. And I've got pride in, in my home and I've got pride in my car. I've got pride in my business. But those things can't get a hold of you. I, I you know, I, I think I've seen so many times that, that people even take and they, they get they get proud of their humility. But in Galatians, the sixth chapter, verse seven, I want us to notice something. Pride, we've already seen a lot of scriptures down this line and Pride has no place in our life as a Christian. Galatians 6, chapter, verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. So we need to make sure we don't wrestle with this sin of pride in our lives. I've already been here. I'm going back here real quick. First Peter, the fifth chapter, fifth verse, sixth verse, actually five through eight. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder, yea, all of you. Be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, giveth grace to the humble. Then he goes on and he says, humble yourself, therefore, under that mighty hand of God that we've already talked about, that he may exalt you in due time. Verse 7, he says, casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. And then in verse 8, I've thrown this in very purposely, he says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So we need to be serious about this matter he's telling us. Be serious. Be vigilant. Be busy. Because our adversary, the devil, he's like this roaring lion that's walking about looking what he can devour. And we don't want him devouring our life. If we resist pride in our lives, we will have the humility in our lives that God 
wants. And that's what we need to strive for. This is Alan. Hey, I'm signing off here from the Kennedy Compound and the Fireplace Chat. And uh, I hope you've ha you'll have a, a great Saturday and a great Sunday. And you'll take and tune into the service at 10 o'clock. And so this is Alan signing out from the Solid Rock Sunday School class.